Well, let me ask you, wear wearables. Where are you interested in the glasses all over or clothing or what's the health, area? Health, health related, I mean what? Well, I'm interested in a, in, uh, a great product. And I, I think in terms of glasses, I, I wear glasses because I have to. Mm -hmm. yeah, I can't see without them. So I kind of have that problem. Um, I don't know a lot of people that wear them that don't have to. That was Apple CEO Tim Cook answering all things D's Kara Swisher with a not so subtle dig at Google Glass. Despite that comment, the Apple CEO did go on to let the audience at the All Things Digital conference know that he sees big things for wearables. So good morning and welcome to the News Hub. I'm Michael Casey. Here to give us a sense of what the Apple CEO was talking about is George Stahl. Good morning, George. Hey, how are you? So, um, yeah, he's obviously, and probably not surprisingly, <coughs> not all that keen on what Google's doing. But um, he did go on to say wearables uh, have a future. Yeah, what, was, he did, what was he, he talking about? He did suggest that, and he suggested that right now where the, the more attractive wearables to him are the ones that do one item. That those that try to do many things don't seem to do anything well. Mm -hmm. But he raised the notion that he was interested in the wrist. Mm, uh, which, right. but, but even with that, he, he was cautious in saying when you look at people you know, teenagers, people mm -hmm. in their 20s, there's not a lot of people that wear watches because right. they have phones and that's what they use as their, their, their watch so, and so stuff like that. But, but he sees as an area that maybe there could be stuff done. Because, I mean, with. the Wall Street Journal, we, you know, we broke the story that they were, you know, experimenting with right. some sort of wristwatch type device. Was this uh, a hint that that was coming? I think so. I think I think there was a, there was a hint there that, that that's something where Apple is looking at. Now, you know, Apple looks at a lot of things. We know that Apple, for example, has been looking at TV for many years now, but the message that we got from Cook yesterday was similar to what we've heard from him mm. in the past, which is they're intrigued by it, but they still haven't feel as if they've got a new product that come out to sort of revolutionize that. Yeah, yet yeah, he was out there, of course, saying that you know they have some big game changers in the works, and that's a big part of their, their whole portfolio and profile. But you know, for a company that is defined by innovation, it's hard to get all that excited about these sort of subtle hints about things he doesn't sound all that excited about. Yeah, and, and it's an interesting contrast with the interview at last year's D conference mm. with Tim Cook, which, you know, obviously was closer to, to Jobs' death, and mm. so there was a lot more looking at the transition from Jobs to Cook and, and how that's going. Now, there seemed to be, a, especially when it got to the Q&A part mm. later on in the interview, there seemed to be some pushback from the audience and even from Walt and, and Kara that hey, what have you done lately mm. for us? Well, you know, what, what, what are these game changers? You know, it's, you keep yeah. talking about it, we keep hearing about Apple TV, but, but give us something right. that, that suggests, uh, you know, something we should be anxious about. And his response to all that was, we think customers like surprises, and, and so we're, and we don't want to sort of show our hand too soon for competitive right. reasons, so we're going we're gonna to say Of course, he's, he's doing this in the context of a plunging uh, share price, at least right. over the last uh, six months or so, 37% or something down from its peak in September. What did he have to say in defense of that? Uh, he said it, it, the, the, the stock price decline was frustrating. Mm, well, and and he, he acknowledged that it was frustrating to him and, and to, to investors. Uh, but he also said that the focus at Apple is making great products, which is a mm. line that he has said before, that it's not making the most products, it's not making mm. um, the, having the biggest market share, it's just having the products that are most used. And so he threw out a lot of statistics that suggest that how Apple products are used more than, let's say, Android products. Mm. Having said that, and you know, given that those numbers are, are uh, exist, it still hasn't prevented the stock price from falling as people are worried about what's next. And that isn't what we got from him last night. Right. I mean, he had a lot to be defensive about to some extent, because also on, on the tape was the uh, discussion about you know, Apple's tax payments yeah, and, and his yeah. uh, appearance before Congress last week. Right. And, and you know, again, he had a, sim sim a similar message to what he said to, to Congress before, is that, that simplicity should be the goal of lawmakers and then tax system, that, that it's just too complex and that, you know, Apple pays $6 billion in taxes, is willing to pay maybe even more than that if there was some sort of 
simplified way for them to bring mm. back all the money that they have overseas. Right. And and he he said that he wanted to be a active participant in that discussion as a representative from Apple because there's a lot of it that's at stake. And, and he said that he's worried mm. about what might come out of D.C. and the implica implications it might have going down the road.